Hey guys, uh, before we start the video, I just wanted to say that if you're looking for an advanced TacView license key, I'm giving those away now courtesy of TacView on my Discord. So go ahead and join via the link in the video description and look under the announcements section where you'll find information on how to enter the draw. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. Alright guys, so welcome to a new video. Um, today I'm trying something new if you notice in the right hand bottom corner you're gonna see a bunch of joystick overlays okay and uh, a throttle and everything uh, let me know what you think about this I think I'm gonna start doing it forward uh, going forward because uh, it's gonna show off what kind of controls I'm inputting into the aircraft and all that kind of stuff um, so here we are we're doing a BVR fight with another Hornet um, simply to show off this, this is not really a BVR video as much as it is showing off this new thing that I want to try. Um, we are still going to try to make this an interesting fight though. And let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, I think it's quite interesting and could be very useful. Um, especially in BFM videos, uh, dog fights and things like that, that's when things get interesting. Alright, so... Um, here we go, we got the Hornet locked up here, uh, 70 nautical miles, this is TAC. Um, he is flying the Hornet for us today, he's a little rusty in his BVR, but I told him it didn't really matter, I just wanted to try out this joystick thing. So, he's volunteered to be our guinea pig here today. Um, we are at 63 miles, 12 o'clock, uh, bearing what looks like 097, 096. And you're going to notice that the throttle is in the full forward position, full burner. Uh, you want to keep your speed extremely high during a BVR fight. Um, we're going to drop the tanks. And the reason for that is because you want to give your missile the uh, maximum initial boost with your own speed. And um, it's also going to be much easier to evade incoming missiles if your speed is high. Okay, so you really want to try to either be very high or keep your speed very high if your altitude is a little bit lower. Uh, you can see my speed here is 280 but my altitude is 38,000 feet which means should a missile be fired at me I can quickly exchange this altitude for energy as I dive. Okay so here we are we're closing in at about 45 nautical miles this is still too far for an AMRAM launch at this range. Um, I mean, I could hit him, but if he, he did absolutely no defending at all, it might hit him in the face. Um, it's very unlikely, though. Alright, here we are at 37 nautical miles, 242. We're climbing to 42,000 feet. Uh, this is again because the thinner air up here will allow me to fire my missile at a better range, a higher probability of kill. Once I fire the missile, I'm going to dive to uh, thicker air because he's also going to fire. Because I'm in thinner air, I am an easy target up here. So once I fire my missile, I need to get out of this, uh, this altitude. I need to exchange that altitude for uh, kinetic energy. So TAC is fired here at 27 nautical miles and you can see him cranking off to my right. I have Fox 3 away. Now I need to get out of here because I'm a very easy target up here. So you can see we're nose down. Still keeping him locked up, keeping him within the gimbal limits. But I am diving very quickly here. Very quickly. There's my Fox 3. It's off target, but it's just a defensive one. It's only intended to make him not turn his nose on me. There's that contrail. He's marking off in the distance here, showing me exactly where he's at. Okay, his missile is no longer on me, so I'm free to press him. This is called a free entry. He has another missile off. My RWR is actually picking up his old missile, probably. So I'm just going to dive here just to be... Um, extra safe into thicker air 
that's just my RWR reacquiring the because I put it in a blind spot as I was coming down so it's just picking up that missile again you see that missile indicator is now behind me so I've defeated that missile we got attack here at 10 nautical miles we're starting to get into that um, abort range and here he is he's keeping his altitude low look at his vector indicator he's turning into me that's Fox 3 I'm defending I'm pulling out of here he has not fired missiles at me. Missiles away. He's got missiles away. At least two of them. So we need to defend, defend, defend. And crank. I'm going to pull the G limiter here and really crank that out. Really pull those Gs. We hit seven Gs there. For fractions of seconds there. Seven Gs. We're going to turn away from those missiles. Tremendous amounts of speed. You notice through the entire fight we were at very high speed. Sitting at 580, and you'll notice that the F-18 ping has dropped off the RWR, which means TAC is no longer with us. And I throttled back, and I don't know where he went down, but that's that. Alright guys, so just for the sake of this channel, we'll do a TAC view review after this, because I know that's what you guys like. Um, let me know what you think about this joystick overlay. Um, Alright, let's, uh, let's get into that TAC view. Alright guys, so even though the point of this video was to show off that joystick overlay thing, um, we're going to have a look here at the TAC view because uh, I know you guys are going to want to see that. Um, so here we go, we'll hit the play. So inside of 24 nautical miles, let's keep in mind that both of us climbed up to about uh, 40,000 feet. And so I'm sitting at exactly 40,000 and TAC is sitting at 35,000. And so here's the missile launch at 30 nautical miles. Um, I wouldn't say that it's dangerous, but it's definitely getting there. If you, don't, uh, if you don't do any kind of maneuvering, these missiles could absolutely hit you at that kind of altitude. Because uh, they're traveling through thinner air, so the probability of kill is higher um, and a little bit further in terms of range because the air friction is not going to slow the missile down. So we got our AIM-120s off. Um, I got one, he's got one. And let's keep in mind that the Hornet does not have TWS yet, so everybody is receiving a missile launch notification as these missiles are being fired in single target track mode. Uh, so you can see as my missile comes in, TAC begins uh, defending by diving. Um, I am already diving. And what I'm doing here is that first missile, we've talked about it a lot in the past, this is a defensive missile um, just to make sure that you don't continue to press. Neither one of us expected that missile to hit us, to hit the other guy. Um, again, notice this one, this missile. I'm still, like, look at how I fire this missile. I'm like nose down, the target's over here. The missile has to do quite a turn from here to get onto target, and this is going to hurt the energy of the missile. However, the reason I didn't care about that is because this missile was intended to continue to put TAC defensive, so I didn't really care if it hit him. Um, given the altitude, I knew he was going to continue his vertical dive, so this missile was never going to hit him. It was just intended to continue to press him. All right, so there's that launch. We continue our dive here. TAC has entered a vertical notch. He is dumping his uh, chaff as he goes.
notice how I don't turn away from him because I know the range was far and I know he didn't bring his nose back to fire another one. I know that there's two missiles coming because my RWR is telling me so, but um, I know that the missiles are probably not very high on energy, especially look at my tremendous airspeed here, a, a true airspeed of uh, 812 Mach 1.3. I know that I'm going to be able to outmaneuver a lot of these missiles and, you know, turn away from them and everything. So um, I'm going down on the deck here. I'm trying to drag the missiles as far down into dense air as possible, but I'm keeping my nose hot on tack here because I'm watching him and I want to see if he turns into me. As long as he's not turning into me, I'm going to push him. And so here we are at 50 nautical miles. I saw this, this little movement. Look at this. He is attempting to notch me is what he's going for here um, so I gave him another missile just to make sure that even if he does achieve a notch if he exits the notch the radar will pick him up again so it's just continuing to force him defensive yes I've fired three amrams okay but two of them like you have it's not about firing the least amount of amrams to get the, the kills it's about continuing to keep your bandit defensive and just over pressuring him until he can't respond with an answer to some of these questions that you're sending them. Um, consider every AIM-120 as a question. Every time you fire it, it's like, well, how are you gonna deal with this, right? And he has to solve that problem. And you wanna continue to throw problems at him. That doesn't mean spam him. Like that doesn't mean fire five right back to back because you're just wasting your missiles. But if you're firing them at different intervals based on a strategy, they can be quite effective. So, especially in a one-on-one -on -one situation, it's, it's different. You know, if it's a two-on-one -on -one or a server situation, you usually can get away with just two missiles. But So, anyway, so um, I've got this missile. It's still pushing tack here, you can see. The other two have run out of energy, and they're garbage. Um, he actually did notch one of the AIM-120s. No, he, he notched two of them. Good for him because those are very difficult missiles to notch so well done to tack so yeah here we are we pushed inside of six uh, nautical miles just outside of six nautical miles and I could tell on the, the HUD because you can have that arrow that shows the vector of the uh, the bandit it's that it was showing that this bandit was turning into me at six at eight nautical miles so I fire off this AMRAM because that's it right he's coming nose hot on me and if I don't uh, do something about it i'm gonna die i'm gonna allow him to take the advantage so as i see that he's coming nose hot on me i'm gonna fire this missile okay i will immediately defend at this range okay the other thing to to remember which we've talked about before the objective in a bvr fight well in any fight really is not to kill the other guy it's simply to get your aircraft and your pilot home think about how much money goes into training one of these pilots right and the cost of that airframe they don't want you to get yourself killed in an attempt to get a kill, right? Um, they want you to stay alive. So you never actually want to merge. You want to come within minimum engagement range, ranges of the missiles, fire the missiles, and then go cold and uh, defend. So a BVR fight is not going to, it shouldn't, unless you get jumped by somebody, should not end in um, a merge. Right, it, it starts to look something like this. The the guy will do this kind of stuff. Every time he gets here, he fires a missile, he fires a missile, he fires a missile. And the other guy would be doing something very similar, coming hot, um, going cold, hot, cold, and every time firing missiles. But notice how there's no merge going on here. Okay, the merge happens, sometimes it happens accidentally. You push too close to each other. Um, you get jumped by a secondary bandit, that kind of thing. Um, that's fine, and in those situations, you do need your sidewinders. But ideally, you're just trying to use those AMRAMs. So here we are at seven nautical miles. I've fired my missile. I've already made a decision that if I don't defend now, anything he shoots at me is going to kill me. Okay, so I fired my missile, and that's it. I'm pulling out of here. And look at my Gs. Five, four, not a lot, right? I come around, just checking to see if he did manage to get any missiles off. He absolutely did. Okay, look at this. And at this point, I hit the, uh, I, I believe the button is autopilot disengage or something like that. Um, it's basically the G limiter of the Hornet. I've hit that and I'm pulling a hard crank here. And 
at, at speeds like that, you can see the AMRAMs just simply cannot follow. They try to, they certainly do. They have the energy, had I not done that, to probably score a kill um, if I wasn't pulling enough Gs. But you can see a maximum of six to seven Gs. I could have pulled more probably, but not at those speeds, like I was really fast. So you pull those, the missiles can't follow it and they bleed a lot of energy. Look at this turn. The missiles are forced to do this turn. This is gonna bleed a lot of a lot of their energy. And that's it. And uh, let's see Tack here. How did he die? <laughs> I didn't think that's what happened. I thought the other missile got him. See, that's interesting because what happened here is he was slow. He's slow because he's trying to notch these other missiles. So therefore, look at my speed. It's 724 at the top here, Mach 1.1. He's at Mach 0 0.7 at 400. So what happens is this allows him to turn his nose around quickly and get the shots off, but he can't defend any of the incoming missiles because he's just too slow. He still goes cold on the missile, which is the... If you can get cold on a missile, it's going to give you the best possible chance of surviving it. But he's just not fast enough. Look at him. And he had to bleed more energy to make this turn. So he's sitting at 327 knots here, true airspeed of 327, and um, that missile just catches up to him. It's as simple as that. If he was going faster, he could have survived that, much like I did. So that's one of the uh, the mistakes in a BVR flight. You always want to keep your energy tremendously fast. If you guys were watching the uh, throttle in the the overlay there at the bottom, you'd notice that that throttle was just punched into the afterburner position and I just left it there. Yes, it's a tremendous waste of fuel, but it keeps you alive, man. You can survive six nautical mile AMRAM launches like that at lower altitudes. So. You got to give something to gain something. So, all right, guys, um, let me know what you thought about that joystick overlay thing. It's kind of the whole point of this whole video. So, um, let me know what you think, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.